sing with Americans seated here on the rostrum. My friends and co-workers of the state of Alabama, and to all of the freedom-loving people who have assembled here this afternoon, from all over our nation and from all over the world. Last Sunday, more than 8,000 of us started on a mighty walk from Selma, Alabama. We have walked through desolate valleys and across trying hills. We have walked on meandering highways and rested our bodies on rocky byways. Some of our faces are burned from the outpourings of the sweltering sun. Some have literally slept in the mud. We have been drenched by the rain. Our bodies are tired. Our feet are somewhat sore. But today, as I stand before you and think back over that great march, I can say as Sister Pollock said, Seventy-year-old Negro woman who lived in this community during the bus boycott, and one day she was asked while walking if she didn't want to ride, and when she answered no, the person said, "Well, aren't you tired?" With her ungrammatical profundity, she said, "My feet is tired, but my soul is resting." That's right. In a real sense, this afternoon we can say that our feet are tired, but our souls are resting. They told us we wouldn't get here. There were those who said that we would get here only over their dead bodies. Go ahead and wait. All right. Thank you. So, good day, everyone. How's everyone doing? All right. I just uh, will start by saying thank you. Thank you to everyone for making time in your schedule today to share in this Dr. King celebration weekend. Um, I'm seeing a few familiar faces from the earlier session with a uh, Diana Domingo on our voices, so I'm glad to be sharing this session now. So uh, it's just been a, a busy week for folks, so I want to thank you for making time in your busy schedule to share in this, in this Zoom today. 
Um, I, I'd like to start with acknowledgments and appreciation, and that includes ML Saratoga, MLK Saratoga, excuse me, uh, the honorary committee folks, and if you haven't been able to review the MLK Saratoga website, it's .org, and of course you had to register at least for this session, so certainly it's a wealth of information, but also special thanks to Aaron, who's handling the tech piece for now, and Garland and Leslie, who also are uh, coordinating details in the wings. Unseen, but certainly there. So uh, I just was thinking about how to start today, and I, I have offered the Zoom a few times previously, but thought that it would be nice to do something different for today. Give I'm sorry to cut you off, Carol. I do want to mention to everybody that the session is recorded today. Thank you. Continue, please. Thank you. So what I'd like to do is begin uh, with Saratoga Soul Brantville Blues, which is my visual narrative. And this, if you hadn't seen it yet, this is how it looks. Oh, some people have it with them. All right, thank you. And I'm going to just start in the rear on the acknowledgments and appreciation page. So I had not read, I don't remember reading something from the book on a Zoom yet. So this is my first go. All right, acknowledgments and appreciation. Saratoga Soul Brantville Blues is complete for now. It is with much gratitude and indebtedness that I pause and reflect on the timeline, process, and all who have been a helpful part of this ongoing project. Considering the countless steps, people, and requirements involved, collecting the necessary information, and moving forward through endless amounts of tasks and details, it is all part of the careful creative process. I acknowledge and appreciate everyone who has blessed and encouraged my process. I sincerely hope that this collection will bring you quiet moments of enjoyment and blessed reflection, as well as provocative, thoughtful questions. With sincere gratitude and appreciation, I acknowledge and thank Creator, my parents, family and friendship circle, the African Burial Ground National Historic Park, Reverend Michael D. Bell, Mr. and Mrs. Ignatius and Elsie Collier, Miss Henrietta Jackson, Miss Deborah Michelle Foster, Miss Jacqueline Foster Smith, Dyer Phelps Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, FedEx Office Saratoga, MLK Saratoga, Saratoga County Historian, Saratoga County History Roundtable, Saratoga Springs City Historians, Saratoga Springs History Museum and George Bolster Collection, Saratoga Springs Public Library, Dr. Sue Bender, Reverend Joe Cleveland, Mr. John Connor, Mrs. Marianne Fitzgerald, Mrs. Jasmine Gage, Mrs. Kathy Handy, Miss Patricia Nugent, Mr. Peter O'Toole, Mr. James Perillo, Mr. Dave Patterson, Ray Supply Incorporated, Mrs. Lauren Roberts, Mr. Jim Richmond, Mrs. Samuels, the support of Governor Andrew Cuomo and the anthology chapter, Southern Saratoga Soul, as the introduction chapter of Saratoga Soul Brantville Blues. So thank you, and I'd like to begin the the slides at this time, please, and thank you. You'll see a series of images. And this one, of course, is the, the cover image for Saratoga Soul Brantville Blues. And I'll just talk a little bit from, from left to right about the people in each of the images. And then we'll get to the map below um, so if you look at the gentleman farthest to the left, he's standing in a field and he has, he has a hoe because he's just finished 
I'm preparing some rows to plant. And that gentleman is my maternal grandmother's uncle. That's great, great grand uncle Howard Wicks. And you can see it's quite an extensive piece of earth, even just from the frame that it's, you know, contained in. So Uncle Howard was, again, my paternal grandmother's uncle, my grandmother's mother's brother. So um, he lived in the house that you see behind him, and that's over here in Brantville. And I, I'm blessed now to be resident in, in that house. So it's been in our family for a number of generations. And uh, <clears throat> Uncle Howard, I understand, was born in Northumberland and he had two brothers, Emma and Eugene, and his sister, Julia, was my grandmother's mother. So we're gonna move over next to the, the double picture of the couple. And this is an image of my paternal grandparents, uh, Emery, Dags, and Maud Wicks. So they are the couple that had eight children, one of which was my father. My father was the youngest of the eight. So I just really appreciate the contrast in these two images, given their work ethic and they're dressed in their work clothes on the left and then you'll see them on the right in front of their home, in front of their automobile here in Brantville. The house though, um, it was torn down a few years ago and a new family built a new house, which is also here in Brantville. Uh, the next image with the little girl in the dress with the bow is the oldest of my father's siblings, my aunt Ethel. Some people may have known her as Ethel Falby, but she was born in 1911 and uh, she was really awesome. She left Saratoga following high school to pursue her dream of, of dressmaking. So she moved to New York City to take up uh, school for dressmaking. And uh, then later she retired she eventually went to college, which was not common for women in her era. And she studied at the City University of New York, which you may know the campus is in Harlem. And she attained her, I believe her bachelor's degree in social work. So she was basically in admissions at Harlem Hospital for quite a good length of time. And during World War II, she was like a Rosie the Riveter and she actually worked in New Jersey at a factory where they manufactured parachute latch releases. And she used to tell us how, you know, her supervisors and people would be coming in and, ins and inspect their work. And you, you know, you'd really better be quite on your game because you were basically dealing with someone's life. All right, so the, she lived next door to us uh, growing up. so. By that time, she had retired and come back home to Saratoga. And in the next picture, it's called Jam Session. There are four relatives, the three of whom are brothers. My father is standing with the guitar. And this picture is taken actually next door um, at my cousin Henrietta's home. My uncle Junie, who was the first boy, he's seated in the white shirt. Then my uncle Donald, who is kind of turned looking, seated at the piano. And then our cousin, Al Sawyer, who uh, passed away in the last few years and he actually served, I believe, in the Air Force. So out of everyone in the image, only Uncle Donald and cousin Al were World War II veterans. And then um, last but not least, my mother, she's pictured in her high school graduation photo. And my mother came here as a teenager during the 1940s um, to be a, like a live-in nanny for a family on Beekman Street. And she took a little time 
to be in Brooklyn. And while she was there, she finished her secondary schooling at Boys and Girls High in Brooklyn. So this is her high school graduation photo. And if you look down on the map with me, you will see Brantville. I just like to direct your eyes to the left side, just below where it says South Co Cor Corporation line. And if you drop down, you see a box that says capital I and Brant and 15. So there were some allotments there. And basically this is what where Brantville um, is. And folk called it Brantville. And uh, I am just really glad to be able to share this information with you. So you can see the proximity from um, Jefferson Street, which would be the right side border um, and South Broadway, which would be the, the bolder left side border south of Crescent Street, which is the South Corporation line. And uh, not very far from the Green Ridge Cemetery. So we're just down the street from the rec center for those of you who know the neighborhood. All right, next plate, please. So I just chose a few select images to share, you know, as kind of a preview, but I did also include some research from places other than Saratoga Springs. The first of which is the A is for African burial ground and that's page 14 in the book. And if you have a chance to visit, I would highly recommend it's a national historic park. And I can't tell you everything, but it's in here. Next plate, please. So these are just a few images that I was permitted um, to use from the African burial ground, which is in lower Manhattan and just talking about a diaspora and where people were taken from Africa. And you'll, you'll, you'll note the Atlantic Ocean, the transatlantic slave trade, dispersing millions of Africans around the world. And you know, it just makes you just get to thinking, maybe I should do my DNA to see exactly where I came from. So, the skills, labor, and that of their descendants built the city and its wealth. Next plate, please. B is for Brantville. So we've already seen on the cover the physical location of Brantville. Next plate, please. And we can review it here. Maybe this is a little better visual. So you can see that uh, Oh, it really doesn't show. It wouldn't. That this is an 1879 map, so it wouldn't show. You know what's there now being over on the west side of Brantville, the Racino. So if you're familiar with Jefferson Street, you know that that's the the western border of it. All right. Next plate, please. E is for Ethel. Um, my Aunt Ethel, as I mentioned um, from the cover, she is the oldest of the, the eight Dags children and was born September 13th, I believe it was, 1911. So there's actually like a 20 year span between Aunt Ethel and my father, who's the youngest. So it just is almost kind of mind boggling to think that you know, in, in her lifetime, she lived through so much history. So if we're blessed to have folks in our families who can kind of, you know, give us some clues as to what things were like during the times they lived, and I highly encourage you to, to uh, you know, ask, ask. People sometimes will be much more willing to have conversations than we might guess. Our next plate, please. Again, Anna Ethel's baby picture. Yeah, she would have been about two or three in this picture, so a couple of years after. All right, next plate, please. I just really love this image because it's her high school class of 1929.
graduation photo. And if you ever have the fortune to visit the Saratoga Springs History Room in the Saratoga Springs Public Library, you know, it's definitely worth the effort to spend a few hours in there, or if you can regularly get in there, even just to look at yearbooks. So this, of course, would have been in the yearbook, class of 1929, and uh, just a really inspirational photo. Next plate, please. From chapter six, um, F is for family and farming. That starts on page 46. Next plate, please. Again, this was one of the images from the front cover. You can see a little bit better, of course, on this one, <clears throat> the proximity of the field for planting to the, the house. And on the other side of the house um, would be where Doton Avenue passes. So on the front side of this house is Doton Avenue. And I'm not sure what some of the other structures were. Well, I'm quite sure one of them was an outhouse, but that's not there anymore. <laughs> We got a plumbing upgrade. All right, next plate, please. G is for grandparents, graduates, and girls, starting on page 52. Next plate, please. Again, the, this is one of the images from the front cover. And uh, the, the girls, I, I wasn't sure who the girls were but after looking at a number of images in the collection, it, it occurs to me that this, this really has to be my Aunt Henrietta and my Aunt Margaret. Some of you may have known Margaret Karen and Henrietta Alston. Um, actually, all eight of the siblings have, have passed away. My Aunt Henrietta was the last of the eight. She passed away in March of last year. She was, she was 98. So you can notice in the background, the chickens. And if you look to the right in the rear, there's a, a building, which, which I understand is probably the chick, chicken coop that my cousin next door has spoken of. And there's a huge supply of hay that is like rolled or pitched. Uh, and it's like up to the top of the trees, if you look carefully enough. And, uh, you know, you can check online sometimes in the Fulton history and you can see that, you know, chickens were being sold from Brantville, cows were being sold, produce and whatnot. So it was really quite an agricultural and farming community back then. Next plate, please. Next plate, please. All right, 10, J is for jam session, starting on page 63. Next plate, please. We, we covered the folks in this image from the front of the book, but this is a little nicer, uh, more intimate view of what was going on. And uh, I, I see my dad had a Gibson guitar, you know, he had one of those hollow bodies, sunburst ones for those of you who are guitarists. I don't know what kind of guitar Uncle Junie had, but it, it looks like it might have been a Gibson too. So, uh, you know, jazz was a staple in Saratoga, especially along Congress Street during the summer season when things got busy. So I guess, you know, you had to be sharp enough to be ready for a gig. So um, you can see the beautiful decor in some of the other photos. Um, the lady in the photo on top of the piano is Aunt Millicent and Uncle Junie, um, their home. All right, next plate, please. Oh, oh, did you catch all those records on top of the piano? Okay, so it was practice shred time. All right, 12 L is for lovely ladies. <clears throat> and this starts on page 73. Of course, the marching club of the Monarch Temple. You, the date on the banner is 1947. So these are the lovely ladies of the Monarch Temple Marching Club. And they quite often uh, got together as a sor sorority group. And I understand that they, they marched in parades and in the local area. And just, 
you know, we're lovely ladies. So I especially appreciate this image. Um, two of my aunts, actually three of my aunts are in this image. The lady um, on the far left in the rear with the long sleeves and glasses is my aunt Margaret moving over to the right in the rear. Second in is Aunt Ethel again. And in the front, far right, second in with her hands clasped on her lap is my Aunt Janie. And then my mom did say that she, she believed the lady sitting behind the back row at the table with the glasses, she believed that that is Miss Hattie, Hattie Mosley Austin from Hattie's Chicken Shack. I couldn't be able to tell you because I, I didn't know her that well. And it's that far before, before my time. All right, next plate, please. All right, P is for Papa Parents, Play Pals, Pigs and Potatoes. You know, we got the chips going on, Saratoga chips. All right, so this is just a nice double image of our paternal grandfather, Emery Dagg Sr., who was one of five children. He was born in Amsterdam. And uh, I can't tell you everything now, but it's in the book, just about how it came to be that Saratoga uh, got to be the family's home. All right, so that was in 1925, moving on. This is a, a picture that always touches my heart. It's my father on the left and his brother, Joe, playing uh, in the yard. You can see the house in the rear has a number four on it because that was their address, 4 Doton Avenue. And uh, they were just 11 months apart, so they were the last two. Oh boy. They probably had some adventures that I didn't hear of, but <laughs> this one's nice. Uh, next plate, please. S is for Supportive Sewing Sisters and Sorrows from page 100. Next plate, please. All right, and this is an image of my Aunt Henrietta who She's serving guests at her sister's wedding. Pardon me, my Aunt Margaret and her husband, Aristide, Karen, their reception from 1949. And this is one picture that always kind of blows my mind because I can only say that there are two pictures I have ever seen my grandfather sitting down in. And this is one of them. He's in the bottom right, right hand corner, kind of just observing. And then the lady with the flipped hair is Aunt Ethel. So definitely a family affair and Aunt Millicent, the lady with her arm stretched out. The other two men, I'm really not sure exactly who they are. Oh, next plate, please. All right, and this is the uh, dedication that's in the front of the book to my parents and uh, to my beautiful mother, Ruth, and equally beautiful father, Richard. Thank you for, thank you both for being the reason that I know what it is to be and feel loved. And also to all those beautiful people in the world who have, currently are, or will serve lovingly, dutifully, selflessly, and sacrificially in the role of principal caregiver. That's part of my mother's legacy and, and why she came to Saratoga Springs to help be a caregiver for a family that was starting to grow and both parents worked. So they really needed help keeping things with their um, children's care in order. So my mom was like their nanny and uh, she has lots of stories over her lifetime of different uh, folks, children who she cared for starting in her youth when she was living in South Carolina. And not, not just children, um, when she spent some time in Brooklyn, she was a live-in caregiver uh, to a, a well-to-do Jewish family. And uh, that one of the ladies she cared for just was not well. 
So that's part of her legacy, which is, is beautiful to me. Next plate, please. All right, this is some of the Saratoga Soul Brantdale Blues information that if you are interested in purchasing a book, um, you may do so securely online. I do have the PayPal link that's there toward the bottom and I do have cash app. I, I just realized now that my, my cash app tag is, is not on here. And if you need further information from this order form, I can email it to you if you send a request to saratogasoul2020 at gmail.com. That's all lowercase. And uh, I, I even am old school. I don't mind a postal order. I generally t turn orders around within 24 hours as I receive them. So I just want to thank you for your interest, for your time, and for your support. And I think there's one more or two more panels, please. And thank you. Oh, so this is the panel where I did include my cash app tag. But let me just say, thank you for making time in your schedule to share in this presentation hosted by MLK Saratoga. I appreciate your time, attention, and interest in Saratoga Soul Brantville Blues. This newly published visual narrative shares the history of my family and our nearly 120 year residency in the Brantville section of Saratoga Springs, New York. So again, to purchase your copy of the book, all that information is on that plate. And I'm not sure if folk have questions, but I think we have some time to take questions.